All right, hey again, Chemistry. So we wanted to provide another bit of a, a video reviewing balancing chemical equations and then introducing you to this idea of mole ratios, stoichiometry. So before we get into using mole ratios and stoichiometry again, let's remember and remind ourselves how to balance a chemical equation. So we have this chemical equation here. N2 plus H2 yields NH3. N2, it's two little ends that are connected, so I'm going to draw N2 like this. That's blue. H2, two H's that are connected. And then NH3, one N with three H's. Okay, so we like to balance chemical equations using particle diagrams. And so now I'm going to look at this and go, okay, which atom is not in the same amount on both sides? So first, I'm going to start with, okay, I have two nitrogens here, technically there's two nitrogens with one N2, two nitrogens here, but there's only one nitrogen here. There's one right here in the middle. It looks like if I add one more nitrogen on this side, I can have my nitrogens balanced. Can I do just this? And I'm like, oh, I have my two nitrogens. No, this one circle nitrogen is not part of the chemical reaction. So the only source of nitrogen on this product side is NH3. So not only do I need to add another nitrogen, I need to add another NH3. Okay. So, so far, my nitrogens are balanced. I have two nitrogens here, two nitrogens here. Now let me look at hydrogens. I have two hydrogens here, one, two, three, four, five, six red hydrogens over here. It looks like I need to add more hydrogens on my reactant side. So let me do that. I'll add another H2. Remember, I can't just add one H. It comes in the form of H2. Let's see if I have enough now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like I need another two hydrogens. And hydrogens come in the form of H2. Now I'm going to see that I'm balanced. I have two nitrogens, two nitrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. So now I'm balanced. And now I put what's known as coefficients that go in front of each of the chemical species in the balanced chemical equation. So I have one N2, one, two, three H2s, one, two NH3s. This is the balanced chemical equation. And we call these numbers coefficients. So that was a bit of a refresher on balancing chemical equations. Okay, now another way that I could translate this chemical equation or read it is saying one mole of N2 reacts with three moles of H2 to produce two moles of NH3. Those coefficients then become moles. So coefficients can become moles now. So now one mole of N2 will react with three moles of H2 to produce or yield two moles of NH3. And just kind of like we what we've did in the past with identifying relationships uh, or quantities, we can do the same thing from a balanced chemical equation. We can identify some chemical relationships and we're gonna call these mole ratios. So for example, we could do one mole of N2 for every three moles of H2. I'm using the one and the three, and I could write that as a fraction. I could write one mole of N2 over three moles of H2, or just like we did with dimensional analysis, three moles of H2 over one mole of N2. Now, it depends on how I want to use these fractions, but this relationship is talking about the same thing. I'm saying for every one mole of N2, there's three moles of H2. Same thing over here. Now, is the number the same overall? No, but I'm using the whole fraction. I could find another relationship. I could see H2 and NH3. For every three moles of H2, there's two moles of NH3 that are produced. So I could do three moles H2 over two moles of NH3, I could write a conversion factor. That's what we did with dimensional analysis. Or I could say two moles of NH3 over three moles of H2. And both of them are saying the same thing, three H2 to two NH3. And then of course, 
I could also do the relationship between N2 and NH3. For every one mole of N2, there are two moles of NH3 that are produced. And of course, I could write that as fractions. One mole of N2 over two moles of NH3 or two moles of NH3 over one mole of N2. So now I have all these different mole ratios, we'll call them. All these different stoichiometric relationships, we'll call them. We could use these and dimensional analysis to solve the following questions that you'll see this week. So what if I ask the question, how many moles of NH3 can be produced if eight moles of H2 fully react? So if I have eight moles of H2 and they fully react, remember dimensional analysis is a given times your want over your given. So now I need to find, and I, I'll get what I want, calculation in the end. So now I need to find, I need to find which relationship is going to help me relate H2 to NH3. And you'll see that right here in the middle, I have three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3. So I'm going to write both of them and we'll figure out which one I want to use. So three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3 or two moles of NH3 for every three moles of H2. And now we have to decide which of these I want to use. So I start with what's given to me. I have eight moles of H2, eight moles of H2. And I'm going to do dimensional analysis, of course. The units that I start here with, which are moles of H2, the units that I have are going to go on the bottom here, moles of H2. So again, to backtrack, I need a relationship between NH3 and H2. That's right here. And now I'm going to need one of these that has H2 in the bottom. That's this one. Three moles of H2 for every two moles of NH3. And now I could calculate. I'm going to do 8 times 2, which is 16. You multiply by the top, and then you divide by the bottom. So 8 times 2 is 16. 16 divided by 3 is going to be equal to 5.33 moles of NH3. And that's going to be my final answer. And just so you know, these moles of H2 will cancel out and I'll be left with moles of NH3. Let's do two more examples. How many moles of N2 are required to react with 13 moles of H2? So I have 13 moles of H2. And I'll write that over here. And I'm going to need a relationship between H2 and N2. Well, that's right here. N2 and H2. For every one mole of N2, there's three moles of H2. Or for every three moles of H2, there's one mole of N2. And now I have to figure out which of these am I going to use to calculate what I want. Well, if I'm starting with H2 again, I'm going to need H2 in the denominator, moles of H2. And so now I have to figure out which of these relationships I'm going to need that has moles of H2 in the bottom. And it's this one. One mole of N2 for every three moles of H2. So now I'm going to have three moles of H2 on the bottom and one mole of N2 on top. And so again, like I said, now I could do my dimensional analysis business. You multiply your top number, so it's going to be 13 times 1. And then you divide by your denominator. I'm going to divide by 3. If I do 13 times 1, I get 13. Divided by 3, I get 4.33 moles. And these H2s cancel out, and I'm just left with moles of N2. Let's do one more. Let's do this last one. Might be able to do it a little bit faster. So now I say, uh, how many moles of N2 must have reacted to produce eight moles of NH3? So now I could start my dimensional analysis with eight moles of NH3 
and I know that moles of NH3 have to be on the bottom. That's how I've gotten here. Now I have to think about, I need a relationship that relates N2 and NH3. That's right here up here. One mole of N2 for every two moles of NH3. And I'm going to make this a little bit quicker. Which of these has moles of NH3 on the bottom? This one. So I'm going to have one mole of N2 for every two moles of NH3. And I'm going to use that over here. I'm selecting that. I'm going to use that over here. One mole of N2 for every two moles of NH3. And it has two on the bottom. And so now I could calculate this. I could do eight times one, which is eight, divided by two. I'm going to get four moles of NH3. And so these were three separate examples of using mole ratios to solve for what we're asking for. And these all come from the balanced chemical equation. So hopefully you could use this video to help you through this week and understand and define mole ratios and calculate other quantities in chemical reactions.